Desde Polonia llega Pavel Savinsky, él es responsable de la oficina de prensa del Museo Estatal de Auschwitz en Birkenau. Muchas gracias de verdad por estar con nosotros. Lo escuchamos antes, queremos eh, decirle a todo nuestro público, a todas las personas que se conectan, que recuerden que puede compartir sus impresiones, eh, sus comentarios en nuestras redes sociales con el numeral Seminario 2021. Seminario 2021 y también pueden incluir el arroba Centro Memoria H. Centro Memoria H. Lo dejo así. Ahora sí, doctor Pavel, lo escuchamos. Buenos días, señoras y señores. Eh, gracias por la invitación. Es un privilegio que puedo estar con ustedes durante este seminario importante para hablarles de la misión y el significado del memorial. Desgraciadamente, mi español no es suficiente bueno para hacer una presentación en español. Voy a hablar en inglés, lo siento. So, uh, good morning. First of all, uh, thank you for the invitation to the institution. And I wish to apologize because the director of the memorial uh, was scheduled to be present during the conference. Unfortunately, um, there was a health problem and I was uh, asked to, uh, to switch. So I'm, I'm taking your place. I hope that what I Entonces, will say about the memorial will be important for you. Um, and um, so I have the presentation and I would like to Entonces talk about voy a hacer la presentación. Uh, things, the, uh, memorial, uh, the memorial and its history, but also the meaning and the symbol Queremos of the memorial hablar del, uh, el today. Significado de la memoria. So let me start the presentation. Permítanme comenzar con la presentación. And I would like to start with uh, primero me this gustaría photograph. comenzar con esta fotografía. I don't know if any one of you no has seen this si photograph. No sé si alguno de ustedes la ha visto. This is a group of young people in Barabu, Wisconsin es in the United States. Es un grupo States. de personas en Wisconsin. And as you can see they perform the, the Nazi ver, salute. Están haciendo el saludo nazi. And they say they wave at the photographer, y but of course, dicen que this, están saludando uh, al fotógrafo. This is clear that they are doing Pero something else. Claro que están and haciendo otra cosa. when this picture uh, went viral, the Auschwitz Cuando Memorial also reacted to this viral, Entonces, se, fue muy complicada la situación. And all of us know photographs like this because all of us went through the school system and school children are, are usually lined uh, in those groups. And this is the picture from the past. And the person that you can see in this top right corner is Adolf Hitler. So Adolf Hitler Entonces, um, also Adolf went Hitler through school system, also went through some colegio, process of socialization and education. And when he was adult, he started teaching adulto, other people his ideology. So he started poisoning people's minds with the ideology of hatred. And this is something very important. And later, people who went adelante, through this educational system follow este the Nazi party, and majority of people in Nazi Germany nazi uh, participated or followed the regime. Here you can see the picture of one person who is not performing the Nazi salute, but thanks to propaganda, no majority of people nazi, followed. Pero la de las sí esta and later, the same people, uh, a few years later, started running Auschwitz, which became a huge extermination camp. And here you can see the picture of Birkenau from May of 1944, uh, where you can see the same people organizing mass Ahora, murder. Vemos en 1944 las mismas personas. So this is the site today. So this is the role of the memorial to look at this history to study this history and also to find some kind of a meaning in uh, in this historical place. And 
When we look at the history of Auschwitz, sí, we of course have um, pictures like the, the one before, when you can see a train entering the, uh, the camp. But and Auschwitz is the symbol of extermination of Jewish people. El símbolo de la exterminación del pueblo judío. And however, the story starts earlier. So let me give you a little bit of historical background to the development of uh, Auschwitz. Anteriores al desarrollo de Auschwitz. So this is the picture of the first transport. June 14, 1940. 728 men, and they became the first prisoners of the camp, which the Germans planned to be a tool of terror against Polish intellectuals, intelligentsia, resistance. And uh, this is the first plan of uh, the Auschwitz camp. Uh, so the camp is slowly growing in 1940, but the most of the prisoners at that time were Polish prisoners, were Polish people. The first plan of development of Auschwitz is a huge farming uh, station. So here you can see this, this plan with the Auschwitz camp where I'm putting the mark. And then you have the 40 square kilometers from where Germans expelled local Polish population and created a, a 40 square kilometers of isolated zone, allowing different kinds of farming activity. And then a huge chemical company entered into uh, Auschwitz. It, the company was called IG Farben. And they started building a factory of synthetic rubber uh, near uh, the camp. And they needed a lot of slave labor. And Auschwitz decided to use uh, Soviet prisoners of war, Soviet soldiers, because this is the moment where Germany attacked the Soviet Union in June of 1941. So a few months later, they planned to incarcerate many Soviet soldiers to be the slave labor in the camp. Prisioneros que los convirtieron en esclavos para trabajar en este campo. And the camp also received the orders to kill any of the political officers, so members of the Communist Party in the Soviet Army. And because the numbers of these people were was big, the camp decided to experiment with poisonous gas to murder them. El gas venenoso para asesinarlos. So in late 1941, uh, Auschwitz starts to have a tool to kill people in gas chambers. For the Soviet soldiers, Auschwitz starts building a second camp. Um, and the camp was built in a nearby village, and the name of the village was Birkenau. And therefore, we have the second part of Auschwitz. Aquí tenemos uh, la segunda etapa de Auschwitz. And so the, the experiment with poisonous gas Hicieron was in this basement. It was gas the basement venenoso. of the camp prison in block 11. So in these corridors, these people were killed. Corredores, and se later, the first gas chamber adelante. was created. You tenemos can see the building here, right next to the crematorium. The Germans used a space to uh, kill people. Para and a few months later, uh, another source of slave labor was opened because Nazi Germany began to deport the Jewish people from Germany and from Western occupied So Auschwitz was told, you can get the Jews to be the slave labor for the camp, for the farming, but also and en cualquier actividad económica que se requiriera que podía ser eh, agricultura o cualquier otra. And because the transport of Jewish people Debido very soon que started including also older judíos, people, also children, so people who were useless as slave laborers, como ancianos y niños que no podían desempeñarse como esclavos, entonces fueron dirigidos a las cámaras de gas y empezaron a hacer la selección. Entonces, cuando llegaba el transporte, 
pensaban a seleccionar a estas personas, a dividirlos entre los que podían trabajar como esclavos ¿sí? y todos aquellos que iban a ser asesinados en las cámaras de gas. Así que ustedes pueden ver el último sistema donde tenemos cuatro crematorios y las cámaras de gas. Aquí ven ustedes la fotografía aérea de este gran campo que se utilizaba para la exterminación. So when we talk about the history of Auschwitz, Cuando we talk hablamos about de la historia camp, de Auschwitz, estamos hablando functions. de un campo que tenía varias funciones. Concentration camp for Era un campo tens de concentración of of para cientos de prisioneros. And extermination camp where people un were campo de exterminación donde inmediatamente después de llegar a la gente se la asesinaba. So here you can see once again the site of Birkenau with Hungarian Jews and the two buildings that you can see in the, in the back with chimneys. These are two of those huge crematorias. Posterior, los crematorios que se distinguen por sus chimeneas. And in Auschwitz, I mentioned uh, so far three groups of victims. I mentioned the Polish, Polish people. Pueblo polaco. I mentioned the Jews También mencioné a los judíos and Soviet soldiers. Y los soldados soviéticos. But Nazi ideology targeted other, other Pero groups of la people. ideología comenzó también a atacar a otros grupos de personas. And here you have a picture of a, a Sinti, y tenemos una uh, woman. fotografía so, Sinti and Roma, the gypsies, de Sinti was another y Roma, that was los gitanos, by, que fue otro grupo uh, que Nazi también ideology. fueron atacados. And then in Auschwitz we'll find many en more. Auschwitz vamos Jehovah a encontrar witnesses. muchísimos uh, más grupos de personas. Of Spanish origin. Tenemos 44 personas de es origen español. You will find uh, a small group of German homosexuals. Un grupo so, de homosexuales uh, alemanes. Auschwitz, Así que en Auschwitz vamos a encontrar Nazi una gran cantidad de enemies, personas que la ideología nazi consideraba enemigos and they were attacked uh, by this concentration and atacados en estos campos de concentración so the two people in this picture así que las dos personas uh, above, que aparecen en estas fotografías the resistance, Vitor Pileski, son who was los que se consideraban resistencia the resistance movement in Auschwitz and then y por eso los llevaban a Auschwitz a 13 year girl who was Tenemos just the daughter of a de farmer 13. And these farmers were Años from que era hija de campesinos. And she, uh, she was killed after three months Fue with the asesinada después into her heart. de tres meses eh, a través de una inyección letal. And, uh, among the stories of Entre las historias de más de un millón Auschwitz, de personas que pasaron por Auschwitz, vamos a encontrar algunas historias increíbles. In Esta persona low, que vemos uh, aquí, low line, his name en is Edward la parte Hamel. inferior, el, el señor Edward Hannon. Uh, Edward Hamel was born in New York City, in the United Fue States. Un americano nacido en la ciudad de Nueva York. And he was of Dutch emigration and then when he was a teenager, era de ascendencia he went to uh, he went to the Netherlands and he started Fue playing football for um, y empezó Ajax a jugar Amsterdam fútbol and he para was the first Jewish and first American player of Ajax Amsterdam. Fue el primer and, jugador uh, when the Germans started deporting Americano Jews from the Netherlands. Equipo to Auschwitz, he, his wife, los his two children were deported, his wife and his children were murdered immediately, and Edward Hamel survived only four months, and he died in the camp. Y él solo sobrevivió cuatro meses más, y después falleció en el campo de concentración. And for those many reasons, Auschwitz today, as the site of the memory, es, is important Auschwitz for many different groups of people, many different religions, many different cultures. So de personas, you can see some minorías. meetings that are organized at the memorial, including Christians, including Buddhists, including different churches. Organizado. You can also see, of course, different pueden events organized by the Jewish people. And we, as the memorial, are, uh, our mission is to preserve the site, but also preserve all those different sitio, memories in the, uh, of uh, Auschwitz. 
and you can see some other visits um, and then including the Pope, including different politicians, Papa, including members of the uh, judiciary ward, so judges eh, of, uh, of uh, international court system. So this place is really important for many, many groups of people. Muchos grupos de personas. But it would, we wouldn't exist Pero no uh, if not the decision of the survivors no in, uh, right after the liberation to turn the site de of the former camp into a museum, into a memorial. Transformar el lugar del campo original en un museo. And here you have the pictures of the opening of the museum in July of 1947. And this is the beginning of the archives. This is the beginning of the collections. This is the beginning of protecting the uh, original site and all the objects, collecting testimonies and educating the world about the history of Auschwitz. And the Auschwitz Memorial are two sites. One Memorial you can de see on the left, sitios, this is the uh, site of Auschwitz I, and then on the right you can see the site of Birkenau. Luego la derecha, so ver our de mission Birkenau. is to preserve those two, uh, those two parts. Estas dos and indeed the conservation is a, a very important part of our mission. La and here you can see una parte the conservation of uh, different misión, objects that belong to the victims, preservation of buildings, de que le also preservation a las of ruins. También you can la see on the right ruinas, the ruin of uh, undressing room of one of the gas chambers Andrés, and a very complex work gas, just to save those historical walls from para... uh, destruction. Prevenir que estas paredes se cayeran y se you can see our conservators at work. Sometimes we deal with the musical scores that was used by the prisoners' orchestra to play, and you can also see one of our conservators um, preserving the uh, 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 prosthetics, preserving a leg, an artificial leg of a victim. So of each, even the smallest object, even the smallest uh, 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 remain of the world of the camp is uh, for us of huge cualquier importance. Tipo de resto del cambio, del campo, lo and here is just a small example. This is este a suitcase. Es un ejemplo pequeño, es una we maleta. have 4.6 thousand suitcases in our collection. And en collection. during the conservation of this particular suitcase, la our colleagues de esta in the conservation lab discovered a piece of paper. Ellos un de papel. It was something that a person put in a, in a hole uh, to, uh, not en un to un agujero, allow water to get in. So he kind no of tried the and when we took it out, Cuando we saw this, and this is the esto. fragment of a newspaper, and it de is in periódico. Polish, and you can see at, in, the, in the top, you can see the date, that this Como is May 1937, fecha, 1937. And this is a, a Polish newspaper, I mean, Jewish newspaper in Polish from the city on, of Lwów, because the, the title of the newspaper is here. So, of Porque course, we will not know periódico. a lot about the person who no put this paper to the suitcase, but it is a trace of a person. It is a small sign of something es that this person did with the suitcase. Algo so today, in the collection, this suitcase is uh, stored together with this piece of paper that we found, and this piece of paper papel, becomes this little puzzle, little piece of this huge story de of uh, gran Auschwitz. Another example, um, ejemplo, in here you can see conservation work, a huge conservation work of one of the brick barracks uh, in Birkenau, and so the project took four years just to deal with this de one de los cuarteles, and de you can see Birkenau, our conservators discovering fragments of some original uh, pavements uh, right at the building. And uh, during this conservation work of two barracks, we found over 5,000 objects. Los dos cuarteles y encontramos más de 5,000 objetos. And here you can see just some of them. Um, some of them are just pieces of spoons or Algunos something that we, we can call trash, but you'll find a small ring which was done in the camp from some wire 
you can find the, you can see this pocket knife and Pueden on some of the objects that we discovered we could also find camp numbers which También means we navajas. can link the object with a person and this is something y very very También important. encontramos números inscritos en los objetos lo que enlaza el objeto con el dueño um, the most important except the conservation the most important part of our Además mission is to educate people and we do it mainly through the guided tours. Recibir a las personas en el lugar y eso lo hacemos a través de los tours guiados. So we have over 340 guides and Tenemos the guides speak 340 over 20 languages, of guías. course, including uh, en Spanish. muchos idiomas, incluyendo, por supuesto, el español. No, uh, para la, uh, for the translation, uh, I, under, I heard the muchos idiomas, 21 idiomas en total. Gracias. And uh, here you can see the number of visitors growing from 2001 to 2019. Uh, Pueden ver el número de visitantes from, uh, que creció desde el 2001 people, hasta el 2020. Ago, and then the record number of 2.3 million people in 2019. Tenemos and of course, what you can see later is COVID. En el 2019. Because we were closed for 162 days last year. Today, we were closed for almost 100 days. And the numbers of 2021 will be even smaller Los than half a million people that visited in 2020. So this is a huge blow in the institution es that is serving all the people to learn the, to learn the history of Auschwitz. So this is a very rare view of the site of Birkenau, which is absolutely rara, empty. Muy, the only people at the site are the security guards uh, of the so this is for us uh, something very, very important and also something that Realize, Esto es algo muy importante uh, that, that para nosotros that y también nos ayuda a, so that a darnos cuenta de que hay que hacer side. todo lo posible But para que las personas puedan to be able to bring the venir of to the in the world. y entender la historia de Auschwitz. Es nuestro deber llevarles esta historia a ellos. So, except a typical guided tours, We have different Además de los seminars, guías turísticas, uh, también tenemos los seminarios. Survivors, seminars for teachers, seminarios para sobrevivientes, para maestros, groups, para diferentes lawyers. grupos profesionales, we para abogados. Have a very seminar that we go también to tenemos un seminario prisons, muy especial donde vamos a las prisiones actuales. Educate not only the prisoners in the penal no system, but also work with the educators penal, in the prison what is the value of human rights because they, on one hand, allow the rehabilitation of the inmates, humanos. but also they need to make sure that the work of the penal system must Deben respect the human rights. And this is something very challenging. And again, uh, a picture of our new educational center uh, just before the COVID pandemic started. We've opened a beautiful pandemia. Um, center for education with many lecture halls, lugar with, muy um, uh, with an auditorium, la with a library. Con un auditorio, and una in the last year, this building is basically empty. So again, the pandemic changed vacío our plans. En el año, así que la Another uh, way of educating is to create Otra exhibitions. De es exhibiciones. And here you can see some photographs of our uh, main exhibitions, which was created by the survivors of the camp in 1955. En 1955. And our biggest project right now is to change Nuestro this exhibition. Nuestro proyecto más grande en este momento es cambiar esta exhibición. And we are not going to make a revolution. We are going no to use what the survivors, uh, what the survivors did, did, and we want to respect the way they want to present the story of the place where la they suffered. But we want to update it uh, in the modern way of uh, display. 
and we poderlo want mostrar de una forma elements, moderna for example, we want to y tener algunos elementos nuevos, por ejemplo, about. Just 10 years after the war, they certainly didn't want to look at the faces años of the perpetrators. De la guerra no quería mirar las caras de los agresores. Sobre eso. But when we uh, talk about the story of Auschwitz and we ask this Pero cuando hablamos question, de la historia de Auschwitz, why, why, why it happened, por qué fue this is the question we posible. ask about those people. We ask y esta about es la pregunta que hacemos, and the ¿cuál fueron las motivaciones? Of people who made this choice to work de aquellos que in tomaron the esta decisión de trabajar en los campos de concentración. Guards, we y podemos mirar to, las caras um, de los guardas alemanes who, uh, y mostrar cuáles son estos seres humanos que creían en esta ideología del odio. Pero Auschwitz puede también travel to the people. Pero Auschwitz también puede viajar a las personas. Hay una foto de la exhibición que hicimos con una empresa española de San Sebastián. El título de la exhibición es Auschwitz, no tan lejos, no tan lejos. No hace mucho tiempo y tampoco a tan larga distancia. And so, with over 800 original objects Entonces, and, and impressive creation by the international group of experts, we are showing the story of Auschwitz to the world. So right now, la this exhibition al mundo. is presented in Kansas City in the United States. Esto se ha en Kansas City, But en we really Estados hope Unidos. that one day this exhibition, for example, will visit uh, one of the countries, uh, for example, in Central or in Southern visitará uh, uno de los países en el sur de América. So this is uh, open. Uh, the the exhibition will be traveling for several more years. So we, we por really muchos hope that más. it will be able verdad, to reach esperamos. places from where it is not so easy to come to Europe. A it is not so easy to come no to Poland to see the authentic of the, esas personas viajen al lugar original. De la memoria. And here is just a picture of a small temporary exhibition that we just opened at the memorial. And this exhibition is dedicated to the topic of sports in the camp. Está dedicado so, al tema de los deportes en el campo. And you can see a boxing glove of one of the prisoners, a Polish champion, boxeo. who was forced by the Germans to fight in the camp Uno de for los their own entertainment por los guardas en el campo. And this is the, uh, the we also create many online resources where También people can muchos recursos learn about en different línea, topics about the story of Auschwitz. And toma, at this page, lessons.auschwitz.org, you can find over Lesson. 20 lessons Auschwitz. that, uh, that encontrar tell más de 20 about many aspects of the story. De And the main lesson uh, about the general history of Auschwitz is also translated into Spanish. También está traducido al español. Uh, we uh, also are visible in social media and También we use uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Facebook every day we try to post historical Todos los días information, dates, información histórica, names, faces, fechas, so nombres, we try to create um, a, a community of people from all around the world who remember with us and use the online world uh, of social media to do it with us. A través de las redes sociales. So right now there is all together uh, we have uh, over one and a half million followers in different de social media. Un millón y medio de seguidores en redes sociales. And uh, because Auschwitz is the symbol for the world, it is a UNESCO Dado World Auschwitz Heritage Site, different events that we are organizing like the anniversary of liberation, um, then the, uh, aware, the, the, the um, attention of the world during such days uh, is at the memorial with the stories of the survivors. So um, this is where we can also tell Uh, about the history to much bigger audience because they follow the events la that take place in the Las audiencias the más grandes son los que acuden a los eventos en el campo. And um, the, the challenging, when we talk about the education, the, the very challenge that we have 
el desafío que tenemos outfits, es que todos los visitantes que vienen a Auschwitz and this is our human empathy and this is very normal miren las that fotos. we want to remember those people that we want to cry and we want to recordar a estas personas and a las we víctimas. somehow have a feeling that we are Tenemos among them that we want to have this, this, this feeling that we are together and Queremos it is much este more challenging sentimiento de estar con ellos it is much more challenging to look at such a picture and also think that we're looking at human beings es when más we desafiante see mirar esta when we foto see y pensar when we que see, también estamos mirando uh, los seres humanos. Por ejemplo, humanos. aquí es el doctor Josef Mengele, que fue responsible por un experimento médico horrible. experimentos médicos horribles. Rudolf Hess and many other people y were responsible y otras personas for que fueron responsables por la exterminación en Auschwitz. In a beautiful y estas place personas in the mountains están to reuniendo en un lugar hermoso, you can las see that there is a person playing an accordion, and they tocando el acordeón. At exactly the same period when these people are deported to Auschwitz. Cuando estas personas estaban llegando a Suasi. But Auschwitz. people like music, and so they uh, they organize this uh, las personas les gusta in la the little música. resort. That y organizaron they built for este concierto in en este lugar hermoso en medio so de las montañas. Entonces es muy importante en este proceso monsters. de educación de mirarles a ellos como personas, no eran monstruos. They did monstrous things, but Hicieron cosas they monstruosas, were human pero desafortunadamente eran seres humanos. They had dogs, ellos tenían sus hijos, sus perros. Uh, the, so they were parents, they were mothers, they were husbands. Padres, madres, and at the same esposos, time, they believed in this horrible ideology. Creían en esta ideología terrible. And there is one more important aspect when we look at the history of Auschwitz. Because uh, we can look at such photographs as this one. This is the aerial photographs taken by the Allies in 1944. And sometimes people today ask, did the world know about these crimes? And then they ask another question. Why didn't they do more to save those people? Why didn't they do more to um, react? And this is a, a question that, uh, that, that, that is very often asked. But today we can see many other photographs of a similar kind. Here you'll find a picture uh, from just uh, 26 years ago Uh, from the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, where Srebrenica happened. Uh, you will find places today where concentration camps are active. Thanks to the satellite images, we can, we can see mass graves in different places Podemos of crimes before the mass graves actually are filled with people aéreas, because the technology today allows us to photograph these places very, very frequently. Hoy ya se puede tomar de estos And we are looking at those pictures y today. Estas hoy en día. And we also come to visit places like Auschwitz. A como Auschwitz. So, uh, and in Auschwitz, as I said, We uh, usually remember about the victims. We do not want to remember much about the perpetrators. For example, uh, one of the icons of memories, Anne Frank and her diary. And we, somehow when we read the diary of, of Anne Frank, we want to build this kind of personal connection with this incredible young girl. But we have another, most of us have another perspective because Pero there is the third group, not only the perpetrators, not only the victims, but most of us are bystanders. 
También tenemos a las personas que vieron todos estos crímenes sin ser parte de los crímenes. Pero vemos lo que está pasando. Como esta mujer con una umbrella en Nazi Germany que está mirando una operación de arrestar a otras personas. No es su problema. No es su problema. No es su problema. No es su problema. No está en peligro. Simplemente está de observadora. And um, in the story of Auschwitz, we have the story Auschwitz. of bystanders who live close to the area of the camp. Observadores que estaban cerca al área del campo. As you may remember, I told you at the beginning that the camp was isolated no, in 40 square kilometers zone. Al comienzo de la presentación les dije que este campo fue construido en un terreno aislado de 40 metros cuadrados. Ki kilometers cuadrados. Kilometers, perdón. And, uh, but there were people who lived outside of this world who found motivation to help prisoners, to smuggle food, to help with medicaments, to even help with escape. And we have a nickname for them, we have a name for them, we call them people of goodwill. And they were very, most of them were very simple people, farmers, poor people, who were, brought, who, who were growing with this feeling that if there is a person in need, you should try to do something to help. And on the other hand, when we listen to some of the survivors, uh, when we listen to the words, words of Elie Wiesel, they are talking a lot about indifference and how indifference can help the perpetrators and how important it is for us to stand, by, to stand up, to speak up, to react as people who are not necessarily engaged in this entire process, but as people who are bystanders. And I started with this picture. And this was a horrible situation. And the museum reacted with some harsh words about uh, the problem that we can see in the picture. Muy fuerte con respecto al problema que se evidencia en esta fotografía. But then we th we we have to think what is our responsibility. Pero tenemos que pensar también en nuestra propia responsabilidad. So we didn't stop at criticizing. No, nos quedamos solo criticando. We sent an exhibition to this place in Wisconsin, Veamos so that the students in the school could see este that. Lugar de, this exhibition was later presented in the city hall of the, of the town, en, en and people alcaldía. in the town could also learn y about the history of Auschwitz. We sent books to the, because the, 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 the people in this town organized a fundraising yes to send the money to the memorial. So we said we appreciate the gesture, but what we will do is, this, is to send books to the school of the same value, of the same uh, money that they raised for us, so that you can help educating these generations in your places, in your countries. So that was for us something very important, uh, not only to have the word of criticizing and to tell that they did something wrong, but to these people too, to educate themselves. And there, another thing happened in this town of Barabu uh, that was very moving. Because just a few days later, after this picture Unos went viral, de other que groups of people started coming to the same stairs, viral. as you can Otras see, the same place. And they lugar, took different pictures, and they showed de... that there is a different set of values that they believe in, that they que... want to speak up, and Ellos they want to not to be indifferent. And for us, it no was an incredibly moving um, situation nosotros, that there was a, a, a small symbolic evil happened and then people decide to say that they disagree. And then people decide to say that they disagree. 
So this is basically the end of the presentation. I just want to, because we use this great technology to connect, and I'm sitting here in my son's room in, in Poland, and talking to people, uh, hundreds of people from different places in the world, using the fantastic help of the two translators that were helping me. So I, I, I thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, but because we have this online possibility, I, I would like to show you just four online Ahora resources that you can use later. En línea que ustedes pueden consultar más tarde. First of all, as I said, most people unfortunately todo, cannot digo, travel to see the memorial. La de las personas no pueden viajar a ver este monumento. And this is why we created the virtual tour. Por eso tenemos un tour virtual. So panorama.auschwitz.org en el sitio web panorama.aulish.org You can find many pictures, but also stories, Encontrarán testimonies, muchas fotografías, uh, también objects, historias, archives testimonios, that so can help you understand what Auschwitz was. It will not replace Auschwitz. the visit, but it can no give you a substantial amount, not only of the visual experience, bueno, but also of historical es, information. Uh, eh, imagen visual de la historia que se conserva aquí. As I mentioned, we also have online Como lessons. les mencioné, también tenemos documentos en línea. So you have these lessons and you have the address. Tenemos and as I said, tres, one of the lessons, eh, the clases. main lesson about the history of Auschwitz is translated tenemos into Spanish. Que la clase o la lección más importante sobre la historia de Auschwitz ha sido ya traducida al español. And you can also find our monthly magazine. También pueden encontrar ustedes nuestra revista mensual. And we write there about memory in the world. So if you, Donde for example, are educators and mundo, deal with projects that are linked with the history of the war or the Holocaust, we also would be welcome to write about your project. So you just need to find a way to contact us and we can publish articles about your work. Los artículos relacionados con el trabajo que ustedes estén And uh, today, uh, one of very fashionable thing are podcasts. Muy importante hoy son los podcasts. So we started our podcast. Entonces, Unfortunately, not in Spanish yet. Podcasts. It is in no están en español todavía. But uh, if you are interested, you can also find Pero, every two weeks si we'll be adding a new podcast about the different historical parts vamos a estar of the history añadiendo... of Auschwitz. Podcast de la historia de Auschwitz frecuentemente. Y esto es todo. Muchas gracias, señoras y señores. Lo siento que no puede hacer esto en español, pero next year maybe. De pronto el año entrante puedo hacer la presentación en español. Doctor Pavel, muy buenos días. Pavel, good morning. And thank you very much for him being with us. Antes de pasar a las preguntas, quisiera presentarle la metodología para el público. Los 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 for the people to pose their question. Voy a proceder a leer cada pregunta. Hago una pausa para que la traductora la transmita. Y eh, daría el tiempo para que su merced responda y volvemos con la siguiente pregunta. ¿De acuerdo? Bien, doctor. Entonces, vamos, eh, esta es una exposición que le ha interesado mucho al público. Están muy atentos, tenemos bastantes preguntas al público y al doctor Pavel también eh, informarles las preguntas que no se puedan contestar, que no se alcancen a contestar el día de hoy por temas de tiempo, serán contestadas eh, posteriormente y serán puestas a disposición de todo el público en el micrositio de la Dirección de Archivo de los Derechos Humanos en la pestaña de seminario. Entonces, doctor Pavel, ahora sí vamos con la primera pregunta que nos hacen y es la siguiente. José Manuel Sánchez le pregunta, ¿cómo reacciona la población alemana ante el archivo físico del genocidio? ¿Suelen tener muchos visitantes de esa nacionalidad? 
So now I, I can't hear the translation, um, but I think I understand the question. And I hope you can hear me. So because I do not guide in German and we have uh, guides in German language, it's very difficult for me to give you the answer about their reactions. But I think that their reactions will not be different to the reaction of other people. And again, when we talk about so many, so people, many visiting people, visiting people visiting the Auschwitz, Auschwitz Memorial, Memorial um, um, you will have people reacting people differently. Reacting differently. Because people come people with different come with knowledge, knowledge, people come with different uh, motivation uh, to come. So uh, saying that there is a typical German reaction would would be wrong because uh, we are uh, all people. And uh, I, I think that many German visitors who come, and we have visitors from Germany, um, are students who come within um, different educational projects. Many of the German visitors are um, uh, are coming in groups and so then there is a lot of preparation done before the tour before the visit uh, and this is for us very important we encourage educators if, if you bring your students or if you are parents who bring your children uh, spend some time to think why you want to come to prepare a little bit to everything that you'll see uh, so uh, but 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 just getting to the question yes we have germans visitors we have visitors from all around the world uh, many of these German visitors are students who are uh, prepared for the visit as part of the education, but it's impossible to give you one particular reaction because every human being reacts differently to the to the site. Nos dice el doctor Pavel que sí tienen guías en alemán para los tours, pero él no es uno de estos guías. Luego no puede hablar de que haya una reacción específica dentro de los alemanes a lo que pueden encontrar en Auschwitz. Las reacciones de los alemanes que visitan este monumento no son distintas a las de otras personas. Cada quien tiene su propia reacción dependiendo del conocimiento que traigan y de la motivación que los lleve a visitar este lugar. Recuerden que todos los visitantes son personas. La mayoría de estos visitantes son estudiantes que hacen proyectos de investigación, vienen en grupos y por lo general preparan su visita. Siempre se les anima a los educadores y a los padres que si van a venir a visitar este monumento, dediquen tiempo antes de la visita a prepararse para lo que van a encontrar allí. Entonces la respuesta es sí, hay visitantes alemanes, así como de todas partes del mundo y cada persona reacciona de una manera diferente. Bien, doctor Pavel, tenemos la siguiente pregunta, nos la hace Julián Andrea Liscano y es, ¿qué estrategias, mecanismos han usado para crear conciencia en aquella población descendiente de alemanes perpetradores del exterminio judío de parte de los nazis y a la población en general? ¿Qué recomendaciones daría para Colombia en donde padecimos las masacres paramilitares relacionados con con militares colombianos, para crear esa conciencia de lo sucedido y que no exista esa permisividad. I think that what we try to do is to talk about the tragedy of Auschwitz in a very universal language. So it's not just the Germans versus the Jews or Poles or gypsies or other victims, but it's trying to find some kind of universal warning to the world today. The warning where uh, for the world where ideologies of hatred exist, where all the things that led to the tragedy of uh, 80 years ago, uh, like racism, antisemitism, simple hatred, uh, people who feel better than other people, all these ideologies exist today. And uh, I think in every country, uh, also in Colombia, you'll find different divisions and different ideologies that enter into the public language and public discourse. Um, so I think that uh, if I could give recommendations of how we, sh we can study, uh, study history is try to look at, first of all, the human story of it. When we talk about the fate of individual victims, um, to try to talk about how 
dehumanization work and how people were attacked by those ideologies, but on the other hand, try to find, try to talk in different places in the local context about the motivations of the perpetrators, about the different reactions of the people who were bystanders and how we can use this story today to, for us to think about our responsibility. What do we do with this knowledge of the past when we know where the, the hate, what can be the result of hate and what can we do about it? So it's, 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 it's rather not pointing at individual examples, but trying to create a narration where we find some universal human language to talk about these atrocities. No, this thing. And Dr. Pavel, que eh, las víctimas colombianas están enmarcadas dentro del contexto universal. Luego no podemos hablar específicamente de que para nuestras víctimas haya algo eh, especial. Lo que sí es importante tener en cuenta es que estas mentalidades de odio, como el racismo, el antisemitismo y cualquier otro tipo de ideología de odio, siguen existiendo. Las recomendaciones realmente son mirar la historia humana, no pensar en cada uno de los casos individuales, sino buscar un lenguaje universal para contrarrestar estas ideologías de odio que todavía existen en nuestros días. Bien, doctor Pavel, tenemos dos preguntas más. La siguiente la hace Nidia Constanza Gil y ella le pregunta, ¿Cuentan con alguna estrategia de recuperación de documentos, objetos, obras y testimonios que tengan personas naturales y que hagan parte de la experiencia en este campo de concentración? First of all, we work with the huge collections of objects and documents that were discovered at the site. But of course, there are many other items that uh, belong to the survivors and belong to their families. So we work on different uh, uh, different ways. On one hand, we try to show to people that thanks to our conservation laboratory, thanks to our approach to preserving the authenticity, we are the institution that can take, our, take care of their personal items. So we encourage uh, people and, and survivors and their family members to donate the items to the memorial because this way they will join this chorus of voices uh, thanks to which the world can learn about the story. But of course, uh, the, the world isn't perfect and sometimes it is not so easy to do. So we have different other approaches. Sometimes we can make a copy of some document or an object so that the original stays with the family. Sometimes the family says that they will give the original later to the most the copy before but of course we are also analyzing the situation online and situation on the market because sometimes objects that belong to the world of auschwitz can be found either on auctions or people try to sell these objects so we are always if if for us there if this object is part of the story of auschwitz we then need to think whether we have possibilities also financial to for example purchase um, something so we are also working with different institutions there is the whole system of loans we are also giving loans to other institutions so that these uh, the, the authentic uh, uh, parts of the camp, whether it's a personal items of the victims or documents or artworks, uh, could become part of this world um, discussion uh, about the history of Auschwitz. Entonces, lo primero es que hay una gran colección de documentos y de objetos que se han descubierto en el sitio, pero también hay una gran can cantidad de ellos que pertenecen a los sobrevivientes y a sus familias. Les educamos a las personas que nosotros como institución queremos cuidar de estos ítems, de estos objetos, 
y por lo tanto les animamos de que puedan donarlos a el, al memorial y pueden unirse al coro de voces mundial que cuenta esta historia. Claro, el mundo no es perfecto y a veces lo que podemos hacer es simplemente tomar una copia del original porque el original eh, quiere está, seguir en manos o la familia quiere que tenga el original en sus manos y luego lo van a, a, a donar. Otra cosa que hacemos es que analizamos el mundo y buscamos dónde quizás haya objetos que estén en subasta y vemos si hay estas posibilidades financieras para poderlos comprar. También damos préstamos para ver si estos objetos también pueden de alguna manera volver a nosotros y tenerlos a disposición. Muy bien. Eh, doctor, había mencionado que era la última pregunta, pero tengo dos más en este momento. La siguiente la hace nuestro compañero José Fernando Patiño y él pregunta, usted habla de empatía con las víctimas, pero ¿qué tanto recordar de ellas, del modus operandi de los victimarios, crea en nuevas generaciones la oportunidad de replicar esta ideología o de convertirlos en ídolos y una conducta a seguir? Can I just ask the translator to translate the question for me, please? So you speak about empathy, but how can we uh, teach the next generation to have uh, uh, to teach this and to keep the memory ongoing? Um, this question is asked many times, and people ask two questions. One question is what will we do without survivors? And the second question, what can we do to teach the future generations? And this is hiding from responsibility because on one hand, we we think that without the survivors, the story will not be told. No, the story will be told because survivors left us plenty of words. And then when we ask this question about the future generations, we kind of leave ourselves from it. And it's not only teaching future generations, it also is teaching um us today and people of my generation and older generation but uh, of course uh today we will find many different ways but what what has been successful in many museums is when you talk about such a complex historical world like auschwitz it uh, with, with so many facts and numbers it's very important to start looking at this from the perspective of an individual and then it allows this relation and then in this in, uh, the, the story of individuals you can go through uh, the same human choices and motivations and fears and feelings that we have today people ha had fear 70 years ago they were afraid of their families they were uh, going through all these human emotions that we feel today and building this kind of connection, looking at the world of the camp through the perspective from, from the perspective of testimonies and and people's stories, is profoundly important. Because then, when you are an educator, you can find stories that your the, the group that you want to teach will will find meaningful. Because in among the victims of Auschwitz, you will find people of different ages, people of different education. You'll find people of different genders. You'll find people with different uh, life experience. So, for example, uh, I can teach Auschwitz a little bit different way when I guide a group of uh, university students from, for example, university in Colombia who are on a little bit different level. And it will be a little bit different when I have a group of high school children coming from um, Hungary. And uh, uh, I will can I can find different examples when I um, work with an ortho Orthodox Jewish uh, school from New York and so on and so on. So it's it's still to keep the universal story um, like an umbrella, like to to give all the facts and allow people to learn the story, but to find this personal language that will allow this connection through which they, it will help them to understand. And then, of course, getting all this understanding to the level of our responsibility today and discuss about the contemporary issues. So you, you, you learned about the tragedy in the past. You saw what were people's reactions. So what is your reaction today? 
uh, because you also have the same human challenge. Sorry for the long count. I do apologize for the, to the translator. OK, interés <laughs> hacer mi mejor esfuerzo. Bueno, pregunta, eh, esta pregunta se ha hecho muchas veces. ¿Qué haremos sin sobrevivientes? ¿Qué haremos con las futuras generaciones? Pero no, los sobrevivientes nos han dejado cosas escritas. Y de esta manera eh, podemos influenciar hoy a las futuras generaciones de mañana. Lo que ha sido muy exitoso en muchos museos es que aunque hay muchos hechos, muchos números, podemos verlo siempre desde la perspectiva de un individuo. Podemos pasar por los sentimientos que ellos sintieron en ese momento. Esas personas hace varias décadas sentían temor y estaban... Eh, y, y estaban sintiendo la separación de su familia y lo que debemos de hacer es construir esa conexión con ellos y poder verlo desde la perspectiva de sus testimonios. Eh, después veremos cómo cuando un grupo a, a, llega a un memorial podemos ver cómo les enseñamos con esas experiencias. Encontraremos personas de diferentes edades, diferentes géneros, diferentes experiencias. Yo les puedo enseñar a un grupo de estudiantes de Colombia con ciertos testimonios que se relacionarán con ellos y serán quizás diferentes a los testimonios que les contaría un grupo de niños de, del colegio de Hungría o quizás a un grupo de judíos ortodoxos de un colegio de Nueva York. Lo importante es que las memorias se vuelven como un gran paraguas eh, mundial que puede relacionarse con diferentes experiencias y yo escojo lo que pueda contarles a ese grupo que se relacione con ellos. Y la idea es usar también esas historias que se relacionen a los, las temáticas de hoy en día, de las cosas que también nos preocupan hoy en día. Bien, doctor Pavel, tenemos, esta sí es la última pregunta, creo que es bastante importante para el momento que está viviendo Colombia en este, pues, en este momento, ¿no? Nos la hace Juliana Criollo y es la siguiente, ¿cuáles son las recomendaciones para el Centro Nacional de Memoria Histórica desde la experiencia del Museo de Auschwitz para tratar estos temas de lesa humanidad en función de la no repetición la, y la verdad y la reparación. So, well, I believe that I touched upon these things uh, both with the presentation and also with some of the questions. Um, first of all, we w when we, we we can use uh, such tragic events from the past to address people today. And we have to, on one hand, always tell the truth and stay truth to the whole complexity of the history. Because sometimes people today, uh, they want us to be short, to be very brief, to say everything in just few sentences. And this, this history is very complicated. But it's important, for, I think, not to stay only on the level of facts. So numbers and dates uh, of what happened, but also to explain why it happened. So uh, to, 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 uh, have to allow people awareness. So why these events in the past happened? And then, and this is the most challenging part, how to make the connection between the awareness of the facts and our responsibility today. Uh, so there probably we could have another discussion only about this. What are the respectful ways of, of making these connections to not to use the victims and the suffering of the, of the people and not to instrumentalize it. But I think that when, when people come to the Auschwitz Memorial, we should be a mirror for them to look at themselves, to force in some educational way so that they ask questions about themselves. So we, this is why we're not pointing to individual cases, but we see this is the, this is the horrible things that people did And this is also the whole world where some people stood by. And then there's a question, what do you do with this? The visit is not only about memory and uh, some people say a prayer or cry or put flowers. And what we want to do is not to end there because then people would leave the site and say, now we go back to our lives. We need to find a way to respect this story, but this history should make people feel uh, uncomfortable. 
because in this uncomfort, discomfort, they, it may shake them so that they start analyzing their role and also their moral responsibility today. I don't know, of course, if this answers the, the question uh, because it's a very complex matter, but this is how we see. So teach about the facts and build the understanding of why the history happened, but find different ways or at least ask these questions because sometimes these questions cannot be answered very easily, but find a way to, so that people would ask these questions today. What can I do today? What is my responsibility to make this world just a little bit better place? Entonces, por, creo que he respondido esta pregunta en las preguntas anteriores, pero lo que diría es que podemos usar estos eventos trágicos del pasado para tratar con estos temas hoy. Por un lado, siempre decir la verdad, mantenerse en verdad a la complejidad de esta historia, porque muchas personas hoy queremos que seamos breves, que digamos las cosas en frases breves, pero es una historia compleja y no solo debemos mantenernos a nivel de los hechos, las fechas, los números, sino por qué sucedió, por qué estos eventos que sucedieron se deben conectar a una conciencia de los hechos y de nuestra responsabilidad hoy. Es, esto podemos entrar en otra discusión enteramente solo por esto, pero eh, decirlo de una manera respetuosa y hacer esta conexión, no, no usar su sufrimiento, pero contarlo de una manera que pueda volverse un espejo y que las personas se hagan esta misma pregunta. ¿Por qué fue que estas cosas horribles sucedieron? ¿Por qué fue que otras personas simplemente fueron espectadores? Y ahora, ¿tú qué vas a hacer? Esta memoria no solamente debe ser para una oración, para un duelo, para llorar. No queremos que las personas se vayan a su casa solamente de esa manera, sino que las personas vuelvan a sus vidas y se sientan incómodos y los perturbe y ellos puedan analizar cuál es su papel, cuál es su responsabilidad moral el día de hoy. Entonces, debemos de enseñar sobre los hechos y enseñarles un entendimiento de por qué esta historia ocurrió y que se hagan estas preguntas. Bien, doctor Pavel, pues sin duda alguna agradecerle por acompañarnos en este evento el día de hoy. Para nosotros es muy importante, por supuesto, que nos haya presentado toda esta experiencia y todo este avance que se ha tenido con el Museo de Auschwitz. Thank you very much. It, it was a privilege to participate in, in the conference. Once again, our director really wanted to be with uh, you today, and I hope it will be possible in the future. But things happen in your life. I do hope that I met the expectation of being just a replacement and that uh, you feel that what we are doing is uh, important. But what, what I said can trigger some reflection on your end, but um, also you... you you will be able to transform it to your context and the reality wherever the listeners of this conference are. Thank you very much for this invitation. Gracias por el privilegio de participar. Nuestro director le hubiera encantado estar con ustedes hoy y espero que lo pueda hacer en el futuro. Espero que haya cumplido con la expectativa y no solamente haber sido un reemplazo, sino que sientan que lo que estamos haciendo nosotros es importante y ustedes lo pueden transformar a su contexto y que sea relevante para las personas en todo el mundo. Claro que sí, doctor Pavel Saviki. Nuevamente, muchas gracias por este espacio. Que tenga un feliz resto de día.